In 1927, William Kermack and Anderson McKendrick published a contribution to the mathematical theory of epidemics and introduced their approach to modeling the spread of an infectious disease known today as the SIR model. In their model, Kermack and McKendrick separate a population into groups based upon infectious status and use differential equations to represent the rate of change of each group as people transition from one group to another when their infectious status changes. The first differential equation, dsdt, is proportional to s of t and i of t. In order to write an equation where this is true, we must introduce the parameter k and then multiply s of t, i of t, and k. Keeping in mind, s of t, i of t, and k are always positive values, and that dsdt must be less than zero, then dsdt equals negative k times s times i. The second equation, didt, has two terms because i of t increases as susceptible people become infected and decreases as infected people are removed. The first term is positive ksi because i of t increases at the same rate s of t decreases. The second term is where the second parameter l is introduced. Since i of t is decreasing as people are removed and because didt is dependent on i of t, then following the same structure from the first equation, the second term is negative l times i. The final equation drdt equals positive l times i because r of t increases at the same rate i of t decreases as people are removed. The SIR model is a simple and effective predictive model. However, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the SEIR model, which is based upon the SIR model, has been more commonly used to account for the incubation period of COVID-19. They created a simulation based upon equations from the SEIR model to generate a projection of COVID-19 cases to predict what the maximum number of cases will be if no interventions are put in place to slow the spread of COVID-19. Now as states begin to reopen, we are relying on projections to show us what will happen in the upcoming weeks. The consensus seems to be that even if lockdowns are not lifted, there would still be new cases every day. However, now that a lot of states are not in lockdown, there is a high risk of the number of infections increasing more rapidly, especially if we disregard the protective measures in place. We still need to wear gloves and masks, use hand sanitizer, wash our hands, and most importantly, practice social distancing because when we leave our homes, we need to keep ourselves and others safe.